Don't you think it's strange that thousands upon thousands of cattle heads are simply vanishing from our food supply chains every week? Ranchers are warning America that a meat recession is coming as our beef cattle herd continues to shrink by large numbers. A major sell-off this summer has led to the liquidation of countless livestock herds, but the mass slaughter hasn't stopped during the fall, and it is in fact at historical highs for this time of the year. Now, farmers are telling us that it'll take years for supplies to come back to normal levels, and this means we'll have to get used to paying much more expensive prices for meat from now on. This situation is triggering widespread alarm across the food industry, and in today's video, we're going to investigate what's driving the silent collapse of the largest agricultural industry in the United States. But before moving on, please support our work with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Throughout the entire year, we've all seen and felt the steep price increases of our favorite meats. But those spikes weren't solely caused by supply chain problems and inflationary pressures. A convergence of many disruptions has made farmers and ranchers deal with some of the toughest conditions for livestock raising in more than a decade, and they're telling us it'll take several years to rebuild our national cattle production. According to the USDA, cattle production is the most important agricultural industry of our country, consistently accounting for the largest share of total cash receipts for agricultural commodities every year. On top of having the world's largest fed cattle industry, the United States is also the world's largest consumer of beef, primarily high-value grain-fed beef. Given that grain prices have risen between 40% and 70% so far this year, that's been a huge problem for farmers who were already coping with higher costs of hay, farming equipment, fertilizers, diesel, raw materials, and other commodities. As we move closer to the holidays, fears of a meat recession continue to grow. In a recent publication to clients, Meat distributor Good Ranchers warned that a meat recession is knocking and supply is about to be tight as the U.S. cattle herd continues to decline. The cattle herd has shrunk due to droughts, Good Ranchers wrote. Our total meat supply for the coming year is down significantly. This is one of the main reasons a meat recession is coming. Many other factors are also contributing to this crunch. The truth is that Way before ranchers witnessed the worst drought and the most intense heat waves in over a century during the summer, the U.S. beef cattle herd has been decreasing. The National Agricultural Statistics Service reported that of January 1, 2022, the herd was down by 2.6 million cattle head compared to the same period a year earlier. That marked the third consecutive year of declines and it was the smallest count since 2016, at only 91.9 million cattle head. In April, way before scorching temperatures started to dry up water reserves and burn grass, North Star commodity market analyst Mark Schultz revealed that cow liquidation was about 9% to 9.5% higher than a year prior, and that meant that the daily cattle slaughter was at 126,000 to 128,000 head range. In the summer months, things have gotten exponentially worse. With drought impacting the vast majority of U.S. farmland and particularly affecting Texas ranches, an unprecedented sell-off started to take place due to the lack of water, high feed prices, and financial pressures weighing on farmers and ranches. Not only Texas herds have shrunk, though, cattlemen from all around the nation have been forced to either put their animals for sale early or risk seeing them dying due to the extreme weather conditions. Many herds were sold to markets when they normally wouldn't be brought for years. Breeders were also culling more unbred female cattle at a faster pace, which effectively reduces the supply of future animals to slaughter, as explained by Walter Kunish, the senior commodity strategist at Hilltop Securities. Those future breeding animals have been liquidated, he stressed. By July 1st, 
The volume of cattle going to auction was up about 20% from the same time in 2021, and the proportion of the animals over 600 pounds was way below normal, according to data compiled by Daryl Peel, a livestock marketing specialist with Oklahoma State University Extension. Selling off cattle is fine if our ability to replace the herd quickly isn't compromised, which was not the case. Peel points out that at that point, replacement heifers, the young, future calf-producing cows, were at their lowest point nationally since USDA began keeping numbers in 1973. The beef cattle market isn't something that turns on a dime, highlights David Anderson, AgriLife Extension economist in the Texas A&M Department of Agricultural Economics. It takes time. Cattle are a long-term cycle, and I suspect this will all play out similarly to the years following the 2011 drought. We could be looking at a lengthier recovery than the 2011 droughts imposed on the market. Scarcity and steep prices are still on the horizon, added Peel. Even though cattle herds can be reduced in a span of a few weeks, rebuilding them takes several years. In the first few months of mass slaughter, beef supplies increase as additional animals are sent to packing plants, as it seemed to be the case during the summer. Numbers then remained low in the rebuilding phase as heifers that otherwise would have been slaughtered for meat were held back for breeding, meaning that supplies will remain tight for years and prices will start to surge as a result. In a recent report, Schultz noted that now numbers are getting tighter. I think there's a fair chance before the fourth quarter is over that we'll see perhaps the highest prices of the year happen right at the end of the year, he predicts. But that doesn't mean the rebuilding phase has begun. Considering that even after a recent drop in corn prices, the cost of animal feed continues far more expensive than it used to be in 2021, ranchers and meat processors are still seeing their profit margins getting squeezed. Feed is the largest cost component of raising a cow for beef, Second comes labor, then fuel and other items. On Monday, Tyson Foods reported weaker than expected earnings, citing that all of these factors have been eating a steadily larger share of their profit margins. Tyson reported that its beef units adjusted operating margins dropped 10.2% in the second quarter, 12.7% in the third quarter, and dropped 22.6% compared to a year earlier while live cattle costs increased by about $480 million. Margins will decline further from 5% to 7% by the end of 2022, the company said. Consequently, producers are likely to liquidate even more cattle to offset financial losses, said Shane Miller, Tyson Foods president of Fresh Meats, on a conference call following the quarterly results. Margins and meat supplies get a temporary boost as ranchers send more animals to slaughter instead of keeping them to reproduce, he said. But consumers will ultimately be left with less beef. And it takes nearly two years to raise a cow once the liquidation stops. In other words, our meat supply will keep going down. Driving prices, which are already up between 17% and 22%, to even higher levels. And we're not rebuilding production at the same pace as we're consuming those supplies. And that is worrying food industry executives who have been warning about worsening food shortages for months. In fact, data released by the American Farm Bureau has shown that in the last week of October, U.S. beef cow slaughter has been at the highest level in more than a decade for that period of the year topping 85,000 head per day, which is about 32,000 head higher than a year ago. The current U.S. cow cull rate is unsustainable, and the debate about 2023 is not whether cow slaughter will be lower next year, but only whether the decline will be in single or double digits, U.S. analyst Len Steiner from Steiner Consulting said last week. Earlier this month, Rabobank beef analyst Lance Zimmerman 
also started sounding the alarm over the herd contraction in the United States. We are on pace to have a beef cow herd culling rate at 13.5% for this time of the year, he said, representing an all-time record high. We've never seen that high of a culling rate. It's an extreme we are going to have to digest, and it's a paradigm shifter for analysts who earlier this year believed the odds of revisiting inventory lows of 2014 and 2015 were not likely. Well, they look pretty likely now. Zimmerman said Rabobank's analysts are now suggesting that this liquidation phase is much worse than the last one due to high freight costs, which have made it too expensive to ship hay. We just don't have as many tools this time around to deal with the challenges we're facing. The first time we saw this level of liquidation driven by drought, every day you saw hay supplies being shipped to help carry those cow herds. That hay came from all across the country. Today's freight rates won't allow that, Zimmerman said. Moreover, another setback for ranchers may come in the form of taxes on farm animal emissions, according to FAIR. This tax is expected to put direct pressure on farms and ranches to reduce their emissions by significant margins. For those unfamiliar with this procedure, to cut emissions by large margins, farmers must cut their herd size even further. This tax would be devastating to any farm or ranch trying to make a living for themselves while providing affordable products for others. In some countries, we're already seeing the impact of this. For example, in Germany, farmers are protesting against the emission cuts because without a sizable cattle production, they simply cannot run their operations at a profit. The independent farms and ranches we work with here in America cannot sustain and should not have to sustain such a tax. American agriculture is the heart of our country, and we want to support it in every way we can, Good Rogers stressed in the new article. The company also reported that the mass slaughter shows no sign of slowing in November, and with that extraordinary level of liquidation, price pressures are likely to keep meat off the table of many Americans. Higher meat prices are here to stay, said Glenn Brunkow, a farmer who raises cattle and sheep in Kansas. Beef cattle supplies will continue to contract throughout 2023, further pushing up beef prices for consumers well into the first half of 2024, Rabobank noted. Americans have already begun buying cheaper cuts of beef this year. This is one of the absolute worst years. I was surprised by the magnitude of losses cattle facts analyst Randy Blach said, forecasting that livestock inventories will continue shrinking and per capita meat consumption will decline by about 6.5% this holiday season. The problem is that when one protein becomes harder to afford or find, people gravitate towards a new one that has a cheaper price and that's easier to access. But with affordable meat nowhere to be found, people are increasingly turning to chicken. But unfortunately, poultry has also been hit by price hikes. With a bird flu outbreak decimating chicken flocks today, we're paying 22% more on chicken and almost 40% more on eggs. Therefore, chicken is also becoming more scarce and more expensive, and Americans are being left with increasingly fewer choices at the stores. Our food supply chain is being disrupted by many different fronts, and the fact that global food executives are saying that meat prices are likely to rise up by the double digits next year does not bring us any relief. Last week, the head of the Meat Industry Association, Hubert Kelliger, said that many farmers are simply giving up production and going bankrupt. In four, five, six months, we will have nothing on the shelves predicts Kelliger, saying that meat costs are set to skyrocket in the months ahead. Whether that be 20, 30, or 40 percent cannot be quantified today, but it will increase significantly again, said Kellinger. Such an increase would already be on the back of already substantial increases consumers faced in 2022. Sadly, even though we're one of the world's largest meat producers, 
millions of Americans won't be able to access the goods we produce in our country. The cost of food is becoming way too unaffordable for many households out there. And if you thought 2022 was a hard year for your finances, brace for more pain in 2023. Because these are just the first few chapters of this horrifying crisis.